Neutral is a place of no movement. It means you're not making progress towards the goals or the ideas that are really important to you. Welcome to Beyond Neutral, where we talk about what gets you stuck and how we can shift and navigate the road forward. As leaders, as professionals in our careers, or just balancing and creating the kind of life you desire. I'm your host, Paula Reed. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to today's episode of Beyond Neutral. So I hope you are all doing well. Uh, the, it feels like the, the next season is upon us here in New England. It's chilly and cold and kind of getting ready for uh, all that comes with that. But it's what happens when you live in the Northeast. Anyway, I'm glad to be here today and continuing on this conversation and this dialogue that I've been having over the last few episodes about agency and the things that can get in the way of our ability to realize that we can take action, right? That we have the capacity to take action. And one of those things, and I have seen this, this comes up so often in my coaching at, and for many levels within an organization, and that is this concept, and it, it's a bucket, right? Of the concept of wanting to be assertive but at the same time, the need to be nice, the need to be liked, happens a lot to women. And it can happen at any point in their career. And I have seen it in men, I will say that, but usually early in their career, that gets out of them pretty quickly. <laughs> but women can tend to hold on to it a little bit longer. And while it may be beneficial in the early days of your career, it can be detrimental as you evolve and move up in, in an organization. And it can absolutely be something that totally gets in the way of agency, totally gets in the way of your confidence to take the actions that are needed. Where I've seen this, and, and it, it's interesting, I just had a, a client recently who started, was talking about the need to be assertive and wanting to feel more comfortable and more confident in being assertive in managing a team and leading a team. And they're, you know, they're at a senior level within an organization, but through a series of, of situations, kind of lost a little bit of confidence along the way and is now getting back on track. But this, this concept of wanting to be more assertive and, and more clear around uh, expectations, and especially in this case around the way that team works together and wanting to kind of to to start to assert a, a culture and some norms that are a shift for the organization, but necessary and very positive and feeling confident in her ability to do that. So as we start talking about being assertive and what being assertive means and the things that are getting in the way and how that's working, I, I'm listening and I asked the question, I said, how does being assertive relate to being nice for you. And she like, it was like, whoa. I mean, it was almost like a, a, a stiff breeze blew her back when I said that. And she's like, wow, wow, yeah, that's what it is. And so there was this, you know, age old connection of if you're assertive, then you can't be nice. Or that really asking and having clarity around what you're looking for is somehow not also a nice thing. And that um, is definitely a female connection thing that happens. But the, the problem with that and the challenge with that is that this need to please people really impacts our ability to make clear decisions and to move forward effectively because you're always trying to split the difference, right? You're always trying to get what you need, but maybe backing off on getting all of it in the way you want it, because you also are so concerned with how, what somebody thinks about you, or, you know, are you being kind? Are you being nice? Are they happy with you? Are you pleasing them? Do they like you? So you're always splitting the difference. And so you never truly have agency to get what you need. And it undermines your authority. It absolutely robs you of your capacity and 
your ability to to act with authority when that's kind of the the tightrope that you're trying to walk. Now, make no mistake, that doesn't mean that you get to be rude and uh, impolite and unprofessional in how you're asking for it. But you can only control your part of it, right? You can only control the clear desires that you have, the objectives that you're looking for, the performance you're asking somebody for. You can control the way you ask for that. And if you're doing it professionally and politely and, you know, succinctly, whether they like you or not, that's out of your hands. You, you can't control that. Okay. You can't, all you can control is your own behaviors and your own actions. So it's a really, really important thing to be able to separate those two things. And to also recognize that sometimes the nicest thing you can do is be clear about what your expectations are. It's very nice to tell somebody what success for them will look like in your eyes. It's very nice. It's very nice to tell them what will be the outcome they will realize by meeting the objectives that you've outlined for them, right? That's nice. This, this challenge can also come in when you transition into a new role, you transition into a new job, because all of a sudden you're now moving into this new level of authority, right? And what you want to make sure is that everybody still has the same relationship that you had with them before. And I coached a CEO who absolutely brought this concern with her uh, when she moved into this more senior level uh, role in an organization. And had always worked with this team. And then she was the person who got promoted to lead the organization. And it became really imperative that they like her. Now, she didn't realize that when we started our coaching engagement. When we started our coaching engagement, she thought she wanted them to respect her. And as we went along in the conversation and we went along in our coaching engagement, after a couple of sessions, it finally became very clear to her that respect was really secondary to being liked. And the result of that was, while her team still really liked her as an individual and as a person, they didn't like her as a leader. Because she was always, she was always, as I said earlier, splitting the difference. Asking somebody to be accountable for something, and then when they're not, not stepping in with authority of, all right, well, here's how this is going to happen moving forward because of this, this fear, okay, of not being liked if, if she did that. So it was an interesting situation that it was actually her desire to be liked that was creating a behavior set that was, in fact, making her not respected or really liked as a leader. And so we had to work on separating those things and really talking about what it meant to have authority and what it meant to be clear and decisive and what the benefit of that was to the organization and how you would feel about that compared to where you were right now. And so, you know, eventually the good news is we got her there and the difference in leading her team was traumatic because suddenly there was no splitting the difference. And, you know, it was very funny because both she and the and the client I talked about earlier, I can't imagine them not being polite. I can't imagine them not being courteous. I can't imagine them conducting themselves in an unprofessional manner when they get into a conversation with somebody so that they have all the behaviors necessary in order to assert themselves in a professional, direct, authoritative way. Once they eliminate this fear or this need that being liked or being nice held over them. Once they eliminate that, they have the agency they need to step in and make things happen the way they want them to happen. So both of those were really uh, interesting examples of how this need can get in our way of really getting to where we want to be and really recognizing the actions that we need to take in order to drive to the results we're looking for. So you can be polite. You can be kind, 
You can be thoughtful. You can be professional. You can be empathetic. Those are all the things you can bring to any situation. Whether you're liked or whether you're perceived as nice, that one's out of your hands. If you've done all of those other things and you've stepped in with authority, the odds are great you're going to get a much higher result for what you're looking for than if you worry about whether or not you're liked or whether or not you're nice. People like leaders who are decisive. People like leaders who are clear. And people like leaders who step in and deal with tough issues with confidence. So leave the liking part aside. That comes. Comes from being respected a lot of times. Not always, but a lot of times. Anyway, that is my conversation of the day on uh, what things get in the way of our agency at times. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to talk further about what you're, what's holding you back, whether it's being liked or whether it's something else, I'm always happy to do that. In the meantime, have a great day and keep driving down that road. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's episode of Beyond Neutral. Make sure to visit our website, www.readandco.com for this week's show notes. That's R-E-I-D-N-C-O.com. And if you found value in today's episode, I would really appreciate you giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts or better yet, share it with a friend. Also, don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All of this helps to support the show. Thanks so much. Take care.